This week marks National Poison Prevention Week and poisons really come in all forms. So this week is meant to raise awareness about poisoning and highlight ways to prevent it. So to talk more about this is Lizbeth Petty. She is with the North Texas Poison Center at Parkland Hospital. Thank you so much for joining Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Thank you for having so me. So we talk about poisons coming in different forms. Let's sort of spell that out for people. Sure. Poisons can come in a lot of forms. They can be solids, liquids, mm -hmm. gases, and spray. Some examples are, for example, carbon monoxide, medications, household products, chemical environments. So I'm wondering, in your experience, where do you find that these poisonings are sort of taking place? And by that I mean, where are people accessing them? So we spend a lot of our time at home, and mm -hmm. so most poisons do occur at home, especially in children. Okay, and so is it just the medicine cabinet? Is it just the cleaning cabinet? There are also cosmetic products that really? can cause poisonings, uh, mm. such as makeup or perfumes, sprays, things of that sort. And it's also not just inside the house, too. Sometimes it's happening outside, too, right? Absolutely. Plants? Sure, plants can be poisonous as well as spiders and snakes. Oh, goodness. So those kids really do get everywhere. Another thing, though, there are some items in the house that people wouldn't necessarily think of being potentially poisonous, but mouthwash and toothpaste can even be damaging? Sure. So mouthwash can contain alcohol, uh -huh. and so alcohol on small uh, portions can actually be very harmful to children. Mm. Uh, toothpaste uh, does contain fluoride, but a child would have to ingest a large amount for okay. it to cause harm. All right, so I guess depending on what the source of poison is, there's going to be a different way to handle it. So generally speaking, is there a rule of thumb you can follow? Should you sort of make the child like vomit it up or just drink lots of water? How should you handle it? Sure, we would never recommend that you induce vomiting. Okay. You can always contact your local poison center mm -hmm. um, for any treatment advice. Uh, generally, if someone has inhaled a poison, you can get fresh air, um, turn on the, just the, uh, turn on, turn up the windows. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody has gotten poison on their skin, you can wash the area for about 15, 20 minutes. If any poison is swallowed, really, you just want to call the poison center for specific information. Okay. And if you're not sure, because sometimes those kids move faster, faster than the adults do, and you suspect maybe they've ingested something, especially for babies who can't really communicate, they're not feeling well, what symptoms should you be looking out for? Absolutely. Well, first you want to just call the poison center right away. Okay. Um, certain symptoms you might ask you are, is the child vomiting? Is the child lethargic? Um, uh, we might notice if they're crying when you call us. And so there are certain symptoms that we'll ask you for. All right, and if you have any doubts, like you said, just make sure to call the experts, Absolutely. call the poison Any center. time. We are open 24-7, 365 days a year, year-round. Right. Sounds yes, good. Elizabeth Petty, thank you so much for joining Absolutely. us this afternoon with some really great information. 